Tim Sullivan, live from Kennesaw, Georgia, and looking forward to uh, doing a good presentation today on uh, the basics of flux drum and container pumps. A little bit about uh, flux pumps. We're uh, a German company, uh, 65 years old, give or take. Uh, we invented the first electric powered drum and container pump, and we're uh, in Atlanta here for about 35 years. I most recently moved to Kennesaw, Georgia about a year ago, uh, last April. And we certainly welcome uh, each and every one of you if you're in the Atlanta area, you have a standing invitation to come visit. We'd certainly like to show off our facility to you. So let's talk a little bit about Flux. Um, we are the number one brand in this technology. And when I say number one, we're talking about design, performance, durability, wear life, range of products and solutions. So today uh, we're going to talk about you know why drum pumps and why flux. So uh, let's talk about uh, drum and container pumps uh, as, a, as an entity first of all. And this is uh, an example here of a, uh, a compressed air motor and a small tube. Now we do actually make them this small and uh, we make them up to 10 feet in length and that's why we insist on saying drum and container pump so we don't pigeonhole ourselves just talking about a drum pump for uh, say a 55 gallon drum as you see here behind me. Okay so uh, in this design you have a motor that has a drive piece and that engages the uh, coupling of the pump and when that rotates it's actually rotating an impeller that's at the bottom of the tube. So let's take a look at that. And we can see here that uh, this is the inner tube with the impeller. And when uh, this is all put back together and you put the motor on, turn the motor on, the product comes up the tube and out the discharge port. Okay, in our, in our family of pumps we uh, offer five different uh, materials of construction and we offer five different lanes. Uh, excuse me, five different models. So let's talk about uh, materials. Uh, why do we need five different materials? First of all, we are pumping uh, the most dangerous types of, uh, of chemicals and acids and so on. Uh, prior to having uh, this type of pump, people had a tendency to pour, tip, and ladle out of 55-gallon uh, drums and other vessels. So this gives us the safest uh, piece of equipment to transfer um, dangerous fluids from drums or other containers. So we're talking about acids, caustics, bleach, uh, solvents, flammables. We pump uh, thin fluids and we pump uh, with our high viscosity pumps uh, quite, quite thick fluids uh, well in excess of 100,000 centipoise. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the, the five materials. Our most popular is uh, the polypropylene and that covers a very broad range of, uh, of chemistry. And beyond that, we have a, a Kynar pump, which is also known as PVDF. You can see the difference in the color, white versus kind of a beige color. And um, then we have three metal materials. We start with aluminum, that's generally used for oils, and then 316 stainless steel, and Hastelloy C. Um, two of those materials are designed for pumping flammables because they can be effectively grounded. And uh, on those tubes, the Hasseloy and the stainless, we have a grounding lug, as we do also on our motors that are approved for flammable. So any air motor is approved for flammables, and then we have select electric motors uh, that are approved for flammables as well. Okay, so in our first design, let's talk, start with the 430 because I happen to be holding that. And in this design, we're going to do a close-up here to show the seal. Okay, so here we see the impeller and a seal that seals off the inner tube. So why, why do we want to seal off the inner tube? It has to do with cleanability. So if we're pumping multiple liquids with one pump, it's so easy to take it apart, sanitize it, put it back together, and you're ready to go. Now there's one other thing I want to mention. Uh, you may have noticed, let's do another close-up, Taylor. You may have noticed that uh, there's a little bit of metal exposure here on this seal. Now, there are occasionally customers that would like to have no metal exposure. So we offer a bellow seal and we cover up that metal. 
So I think you got to look at that. And uh, this is one option that many people are not aware that we offer. Okay, this uh, is the 430, and we call it the mechanical seal pump. The next pump is the 424, we call this a sealless pump. When I say sealless, there's no mechanical seal or packing, but we do have a radial lip seal that's used to protect the bearings, because bearings are not corrosion resistant, and we don't want fumes or liquid getting up into the bearings. So let's talk about what happens if you don't properly protect the, uh, these bearings. Okay, here's a competitor's pump, and here we can see that the bearings are rusted and corroded. And how did this happen? You see this little white piece below the bearings? That's the seal, and either fumes or liquid got past that seal. So um, that, that can occur because you may have chemical incompatibility. Our competitors generally offer only Viton. And Viton is good, but it, there's a lot of chemi chemicals it does not cover. For example, uh, sodium hydroxide or caustic. So what do we, what do, we do different on the, on the flux pump? Well, I'm going to show you here in a second. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to take this 424 apart. And please notice that the foot piece unthreads. And on our poly pump and our virtually every pump, the impellers are ETFE. These are very strong and corrosion resistant. Now, on the stainless pump, we can get a stainless steel impeller, if you like. Okay, now we have top pullout as well on this design. And we um, can easily remove the dry shaft and the bearings. Okay, the bearings unthread from the shaft. Now, let's talk about this for a second. Over time, this dry shaft will wear as it's riding on this lower bushing. Now, it may take years. But in time, there's enough play in the shaft that it needs to be replaced. Well, this uh, shaft is Hassel OC. It's about $200. So rather than replace it, we can flip it over, put the bearings assembly on the other end, and our, we have a fresh surface, and the worn surface is in an area where it does no harm. So that's giving the customer $200 back. So if there's any complaints about the fact that the uh, flux price is a little higher, there's, there's the payback right there. Now also we're looking at the bearing assembly, and this uh, uh, can be sold as this assembly or individual parts. So the coupling star, the red piece, or the bearings, the bearings themselves are usually about 16 bucks. The red piece, which uh, the coupling star is designed to be the weak link. So if the customer were to pump a nut or a bolt inadvertently, it would break the coupling star rather than bend the dry shaft or, or um, damage the impeller. This is $3. Now, to put that in perspective, uh, our competitors refuse to sell that coupling star on their model. They're, they're, uh, they re require the customer purchase the entire coupling, which is 10 times the cost. So a little bit of an aggravation um, point right there. So looking further at what makes the Fluct design unique, I have a, a cutaway view. and let's, let's take a look at this here. And we can see that in our design we have a double whoops, a double lip seal. Now this happens to be Viton as well, but we offer this in four different materials. So in addition to Viton, we have EPDM, PTFE, and Calres. So anytime we have an application, we always want to check Viton because every pump has it, and if Viton is not compatible, we can switch it over to another material. Okay, so Further um, comparisons, I think, would be helpful when we look at the competition. So let me grab another, another competitor's pump here, and let's talk about uh, their design a little bit. Okay, so many of you recognize this, and this pump has uh, what I call breakage issues. So long before parts wear out, there's a tendency for parts to break, and the number one uh, component is the hand wheel because these pumps... Uh, being portable like ours, uh, they, they get leaned against the wall and so forth. So if they take a header, this is what breaks. So these are about $35 these days. And then uh, the coupling, you may have noticed uh, our coupling is recessed, whereas on the competitor, competitor's brand it sits up, so these can uh, inadvertently be broken as well. But uh, more commonly, we're breaking or losing 
the foot piece. It's snap-on, so very often just pulling it out of a drum, these get lost. You're not going to fish this out of a drum of sulfuric acid. They're also flimsy, so uh, with when operators drop these into the drum, if this get a, gets a crack in it, these impellers are turning 10,000 RPM. Uh, this blade hitting the crack, it's gone. So you're not pumping any product. Uh, you can almost break these off with your fingers. Now compare that to the flux impeller. Even if we had a cracked foot piece as well, it's going to shave this down. You're, you're still in business pumping fluid. Okay, another uh, aspect of the design is uh, the wear surface. So on the, the lower bearing housing, and we're going to do a close up here in a second, you can see here that we have uh, uh, an area that's cut away. And you see this white, this white area. Okay, I'm going to hold up now the piece that we cut away. And I think you can see, hopefully focusing in here, that it's relatively paper thin. And compare that to the flux uh, lower bearing housing, or bearing uh, wear surface. It's about four times as thick. So that means it's going to be uh, four times as long before shaft deflection wants to occur. So in our design, in the flux design, you may have noticed this spiral. That is uh, supporting the dry shaft in the middle of the pump. We also have larger bearings at the top and uh, the, the four times the wear, the wear piece on the bottom. So when the competitor's pump wears at the bottom, you start getting shaft deflection. Now, initially when these pumps are immersed into the fluid, the fumes that you're pumping, the, the fumes of the product will come up the inner tube. And let's take another look at this. Taylor, hopefully I can get this on camera, but you can see that dry shaft coming through. That's where the fumes come up and they come in contact with this seal. So if it's not compatible, there's going to be a chemical attack and those bearings will not have a long life. But as shaft deflection occurs, you now have a pumping action up the inner tube. And then in that case, fluid also comes up and starts dripping out of the weep hole. So this is a very dangerous scenario. Imagine pumping sulfuric acid with product dripping out. Now the, also when the, the bearings fail on this pump, they will not sell the bearings. You have to buy this entire metal flange bearing housing, which is about $110 these days. So um, just kind of a quick summary. If we look at uh, the pump from top to bottom, you know, we have a superior design on the foot piece, the impeller, the, the wear surface, the support in the middle, uh, the double lip seal, the four materials, uh, the fact that we'll sell components individually, and no dangerous weep hole. And also, no reversible shaft. There's a shoulder here that uh, takes that opportunity away. Okay, uh, what's the next thing I want to talk about here? Let's talk about um, the fact that we also offer a 50 millimeter uh, diameter. So this is a 41 millimeter, it's about an inch and a half. And I'm going to hold up the foot piece. Taylor, if we could do a close up here, and we can see the extra uh, size and, in my, in my opinion, uh, the added durability from the wall thickness. And so I would always encourage you to upsell to the 50 millimeter because not only can you get higher flow or higher head capability, but more importantly on the non-metallic pumps added durability because these pumps are, are portable. They're, they're dropped inadvertently, thrown around and, and abused. Those, a customer that purchases the 50 millimeter will never, uh, will never regret that. Okay, so we've covered two models, the 430 and the 424. Now let's go to the uh, 425. And this is a pump we call the, uh, the liquid saver or complete drainage pump. Um, now in our other pumps, when you empty a drum, how do you know it's empty? Well, no more liquids coming out of the discharge. But in reality, the last bit of fluid that went into this pump, you're asking air to push it up and out through the hose, which that will not happen. So what happens is when you um, take, turn off the motor, you get drain back, much like taking your finger off a straw. 
and you're going to drain back at least a half a gallon of product. So that can be an issue with, with certain customers. So the solution is a pump with a built-in foot valve. And these levers will actually raise or lower the valve. So you push this button up right here, rotate the levers, and you're either in the up or down position. Okay, so here we're in the up position for pumping. And at the point where no more discharge is coming out, and before turning off the motor, you rotate the lever, and now you can turn off the motor and the foot valve. It's as if you put your hand over the bottom of the tube. The drum is empty, 99.98%, and you have a tube full of product that you can put in the next drum or ca capture in a bucket, whatever you, whatever you want to do. Okay, the next model is the 426, and it's similar to the 425 in that it has levers. But what it is instead is a combination pump and mixer. So you can notice the holes here. This is uh, just to give you an example. Uh, so picture this pump with holes. And if we wanted to, say, pump a drum of oil and water, uh, what, what, what occurs in storage? They separate. So now the customer said, look, I, I want to remix that, then pump it out. So in this case, uh, you, all, you have to close off the discharge. So we can furnish these pumps with an NPT, which makes it easy to put a ball valve in line. You close off your ball valve, you open up your holes, and then you turn the motor on, you have mixing action in the vessel. When you're satisfied with that, you can uh, open your ball valve and begin to discharge, and then gradually or all at once close the holes and it strictly becomes a pump. So keep that in mind. And just so you know, we can also take a regular 430 pump, close off the discharge with a blank cover, drill permanent holes, and we've, we've made just a strictly a mixer from one of our pumps, and that's a big money saver. So the fifth and final version of the impeller pumps is the 427, and that's a, it's a sanitary pump. You can see it has a tri-clamp, inch and a half tri-clamp, uh, discharge port. This comes in a 3A version. The 3A is a dairy standard. The dairy is concerned about bacteria. So this pump as, a, as an entire, entire component is submitted to 3A for approval. And this pump um, is uh, um, electro polished to a 30 RA and then hand polished to a 4 RA. Now we have another version of this 427. We call it our non 3A and it's electro-polished to a 30 and not hand-polished. But other than that, it's nearly identical, and it's about a $300 savings over the 3A version. So uh, keep, just keep in mind that we have two different price points when it comes to a, sanitary, a true sanitary uh, impeller pump. Okay, so that, uh, that takes care of the, uh, the five materials and the five different designs. Now, Let's talk about the fact that uh, there are customers that no matter how convincing you are that it's, it pays to purchase a flux pump, that they'll never, never regret it, that the cost of ownership is less. There's always a customer that's going to buy strictly on price. He's going to run down to Granger and buy a $600 drum pump. So our answer to that is our Junior Flux and Combi Flux. So many of you that are familiar with the Junior Flux, you may know that that comes as an assembly, pump and motor in the box. And if you wanted to remove the motor, you have to get out the screwdriver and remove three screws. So if you're only selling one, then the Junior Flux is a good way to go because it's a very uh, price competitive. Now, we also came out in recent years with the Combi Flux, and you recognize that because of these green ears that fold down and this allows for quick detach and attachment of the motor. So the beauty of this is you could sell multiple tubes and one motor that can be moved from pump to pump. Okay, so let's talk about the pump tubes for a minute. Uh, we, these, are, these come in polypropylene, Kynar, PVDF, and 316 stainless steel. They come in different lengths. This is the shortest length uh, it's about 20 inches, uh, perfect for a bucket. Then we go to a 27 inch, and that's for carboys, let's say. And then the 39 inch is the most popular, and that would be for a 55 gallon drum. And then we also have the 
a uh, longer tube for the tote or the IBC. So a 47 inch poly is uh, coming out next month, which is June, and we're, uh, we're pretty excited about that added capability. So let's talk about, well I have one here, the, the how to measure a pump's length. From, from the inlet to the center line of the discharge, that dimension is your length. So um, the 39 is the most popular again for the 55 gallon drum. Okay, so next uh, we're going to talk about the, the uh, cordless motor that, that came out. And this is a, a lithium battery operated unit. And this uh, gives total free, freedom to the customer. He can take this uh, in a service vehicle, he can take it on a mezzanine, in a parking lot, wherever, wherever he can go, and not worry about extension cords or, power, or, or just the or power cord at all. And what makes this unique is this will empty 10 drums on one charge. Many of our competitors that have something similar, one drum and an overnight charge. Our charge recharge is 30 minutes. And it's very easy to remove this lithium battery. And if you have a spare one, you can plug that in and keep going. Also included is a variable speed control. So uh, this is a great pump and we encourage you to to keep this in mind when uh, visiting with customers. Okay, uh, one thing I, I didn't talk about uh, the earlier was uh, was top entry, the advantages of top entry. Um, you know, we are primarily immersion pumps, and there are times, you know, with a drum that pretty much uh, that's the way you're going to empty it, short of putting it on its side with a spigot. But when it comes to pumping out of a tote or an IBC. Uh, the customer has an option to come into the top or it has a bottom discharge valve. And so uh, let's talk about well, why, why do we recommend the top entry. Well first of all, anytime you choose to come out of the bottom you have more of a risk. You have a couple of connections to the, the valve, to the pump inlet, you know, someone stepping on that uh, or forklift hitting it you could have a catastrophic uh, leak. You, know, you could lose all of your product, you'd have health, liability, OSHA concerns, all that, uh, you know, a lot of negativity. So top entry has other advantages and no footprint. Because the pump's immersed, it's instantly primed, it's self-draining. We can offer, unlike a diaphragm pump, we can offer air as well as electric, no pulsation, it's quieter. So uh, something to, to, to consider when you're promoting products for transfer of dangerous chemicals. Now there are times when a customer will say look you know I'm putting three totes one on top of the other and I'm draining from the top to the middle to the bottom I cannot use an immersion pump. Okay we, we understand that so uh, we want to stay in the game so we, we now offer pumps that have that can be uh, utilized for a bottom discharge. So this stainless pump comes with a tri-clamp inlet we can get it with NPT or hose barb it's a 430 design, so easily clean. But in the sanitary look here, you can pump flammables, uh, for example, alcohols or uh, jet fuel, but we pump perfumes and, uh, and flavorings and things of that nature as well. But these, uh, these impeller pumps will handle viscosities up to uh, 1,200 center points. And we offer a couple different uh, impellers. So Taylor, let's do a close up here. And you can see uh, the one that I'm moving right here, the one that uh, looks like a boat prop. This is your uh, axial shape, and this is your high volume. The, uh, the radial is your, uh, we call it our Z impeller for high head and higher viscosity capability. So the lower, it gives you lower flow, which sometimes is, is safer when we're transferring dangerous chemicals. So to get down to say three to five gallons a minute, we would start with the Z impeller a variable speed motor and we're there. Another, uh, just, just so you know, we also have a poly version of this externally mounted pump. And these are very, very portable, a lot of advantages to this, so something to, to keep in mind. Alright, let's move along to uh, the motors that go with these pumps. And uh, we'll start with the compressed air motor, I was holding this up a little bit earlier. Uh, air motors are inherently ver a variable speed as well as explosion proof. They're intrinsically safe. They come with a grounding lug, the mufflers included, the, uh, the, the uh, fitting for the airline is, uh, is also included in the price. 
Now, the bigger brother of the 416-1 I was just holding is the 416 with the handle and the trigger. And this trigger can be locked on by pushing that button and released just by hitting the trigger again. Um, also, you can throttle the, the, uh, the flow with the, uh, with the trigger. Okay, uh, so like, uh, like the Combi Flux, you know, we can sell a customer multiple tubes with one motor that quickly attaches and detaches. Okay, let's look at our electric motor lineup and we start with our FEM 4070. FEM stands for Flux Electric Motor. It's variable speed. These uh, motors are built to be uh, utilized in very corrosive environments. There's you know, fumes and so on that this motor has to be protected in the switch, the switch area. In the windings area, we have lacquer coated windings. The bearings inside are, are protected from, uh, from corrosion as well. Now this is a great motor, it's our number one seller, uh, but it has limitations on horsepower. So when we get into a scenario where we have high specific gravity, a high discharge pressure, or, or some viscosity, we may want to step up to the 457, which is our most powerful uh, motor. And I'll hold that up right here. So you can see a little bit, it's a little bit bigger. And uh, this also can come in a variable speed version. Uh, protected just like uh, from corrosion and, uh, and all of these motors that we offer are available for uh, virtually any country on the planet. So we have 50 Hertz as well as 60 Hertz, 230 volt uh, variable speed options. Now both of these are, that I showed you, are non-metallic and from here we go to a 458 which uh, the rest of the motors are all metal, aluminum housing with powder coated paint um, we've seen these come back for, uh, to replace brushes, let's say, after 8 or 10 years of service and uh, there's no uh, external corrosion on these motors, so they really hold up. But this is a beast in terms of extra protection, it's a TEFC motor. Um, it also comes in a 12 volt, 24 volt, um, variable speed, different possibilities for it. But um, the next motor is the 460 and it's the same exterior, it's explosion proof and UL approved in certain models, it's just silver in color. But it's the same uh, lineup in terms of 12, 24 volt options, variable speed, 50, 60 hertz, you, you name it. Uh, all in all we have over 300 motors uh, that can be used uh, for the various pumps that we sell. Now all of the motors I've shown you so far are what I call uh, brush motors. The brushes are a wearing part um, they last between 500 and 1,000 hours. So to put that in perspective, if we could empty one 55-gallon drum in a minute, that's 30,000 drums in 500 hours. So uh, it's really the right motor, the right type of motor. Um, but occasionally somebody will want to put one of our units into 24-7 24, 24 service or continuous duty, in which cases in which case uh, 500 hours is up in three weeks. So that would be a nuisance to re be replacing brushes that uh, frequent. So we have some other options and the one I'm holding here is the uh, brushless motors. It stands for FB, the, it's the FBM 4000 flux brushless motor. And this is a, a, you know, a great motor because it, in addition it, it's variable speed and explosion proof. And it, it's available in a 230 volt single phase option. So keep this in mind for continuous duty. In addition, we, can, we have a three-phase motor. We call it a gear motor. Now, generally gear motors gear down in speed. We need to run 10,000 RPM with our gear motor to match the performance of our other motors. So we're actually taking a 3450 RPM motor and gearing up to uh, 10,000 RPM. We have a question? It's the first question. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay, what is uh, the best way to access Flux product when I'm in the field? Great question. Okay, uh, we have the Flux app, and I'm not sure if you've downloaded that or not, but it's, uh, we encourage you to download it to your smartphone, your tablet, your desktop, and it's www.fluxcrg.com. Uh, CRG stands for Chemical Resistance Guide. And that was the foundation of this app. 
Um, again, we're pumping corrosive, so we need to check chemical compatibility. So you uh, can, on the home page of the app, you enter in the chemical and you can find the materials of construction suited for the service. But we also have uh, um, conversion data, for example, it can easily convert from liters to gallons or Fahrenheit to centigrade. And then in addition, we have all of our uh, product bulletins, uh, drawings, curves, O&M manuals, spare parts, video, on and on. So please uh, do download that app. And then, um, so any product you need is on the app and at your fingertips. Next question, does Flux offer trial or test pumps and how does that work? Yes, uh, that's a great question. We have a whole fleet of pumps out back, uh, high viscosity as well as impeller pumps. Uh, many times the customer is a little reluctant to pull the trigger on an order because he's not sure what he's getting. So uh, we can provide a no charge demo pump, we send it out. Uh, the customer can see uh, that we can pump the product, uh, see how easily it is to sanitize, clean, take apart, and he can see his flow rate. I always want to know how many gallons a minute can I get on this application. So please reach out to us anytime you have an op there's a possible interest in a, in a demo or trial pump. Can we get a copy of the webinar? Yes, it is posted on our YouTube channel. Okay, um, continuing on, um, let's move over to our uh, accessories. So I'm looking at a few here in front of me, and uh, one is the, uh, the barrel adapter. Now, when you put a, a, a drum, let's say, or a tote, they have a two inch opening. And as I said, this uh, 41 millimeter is 1.6 inches. So you put a 1.6 inch pump in a two inch hole, it's gonna lean. Now some customers are fine with that because they're going to empty the entire drum at once, they're going to lean it, angle the pump, you have a lot of flexibility. But others say, look, you know, I'm only going to pump down on part of the drum or I'm concerned about the unit being top heavy, so I want the pump to be straight up and down. So we thread in the barrel adapter or compression gland, slide the pump through, it keeps it vertical. Now these come in different materials of construction, but one thing to know is they breathe. In other words, when you pump liquid out of a drum, you have to let air back in or it will collapse. Now that takes us to the next uh, accessory, the fume gland. So a customer may say, look, I've got toxic fumes or noxious fumes or I'm concerned about evaporation. What, how do we handle that? So with the fume gland, it's two pieces. The lower piece we thread into the bung hole and then the top piece threads to the bottom. Inside there's O-rings, when the pump's immersed through that, it's, it's sealed. There's no fumes that can come out of the unit. So how do we let air in? That's what this little 90 degree port is right here. So when you pump liquid out, the one-way ball valve will open, lets air in. Now uh, occasionally uh, someone's concerned about bringing in air from the, the environment. They, they're a contamination issue. So you can, this is threaded or can be threaded and you can put in a nitrogen line or nitrogen blanket. So that's uh, another possibility there. Uh, we also have a foot strainer. So uh, in a drum you don't really need it, but if you had an open vessel where there might be nuts or bolts or debris, you can attach the, uh, the strainer to the inlet of the pump. You slide that all the way through and then uh, the pump and the impeller are protected. Okay, what else we have here? Uh, well, we have the, uh, the wall bracket. Now, if people don't store the pump on our wall bracket, what are they going to do? They're going to lean it against the wall, lay it on the floor, uh, store it upside down, where residual pr products come in touch with the, uh, the seal. Uh, it's not the best scenario. So we encourage you to quote the wall bracket whenever possible. Also, uh, there's opportunities for our pump with open tanks. So, you know, with a, with a drum you have a bung hole, but with an open tank, you know, another way to secure the pump is to uh, use a C-clamp and slide this through and you can support the pump against the sidewall of a vessel. So that uh, just opens up the, the door for other possibilities where our pumps can be applied. We also have hand nozzles and let's take a look at behind me here we have uh, the flux kit with a polypropylene hand nozzle. We also make these in stainless steel, uh, kynar, aluminum, brass, all kinds of options. And then uh, more, most recently we've uh, offered a, uh, 
a stainless nozzle with a tri-clamp inlet. So these really go great with the 427 pump with the tri-clamp. Since I mentioned a kit a moment ago, let's take a look at what we got here. A kit is for the convenience of the distributor as well as the end user because it's so single source responsibility. You have a motor, pump, barrel adapter, hose, and nozzle. Now we've offered kits for many years, but uh, one thing we didn't like about the kits was that we might they might be set up, for example, an acid pump kit and PVC braided hose. Well, that's not good for every every acid out there. Matter of fact, it'd be a liability concern. So. What we did here is we took a pump that normally has Viton and we uh, PTFE fitted and the hand nozzle that's normally has a Viton component we did CalRes and the hose is, P is uh, Teflon lined. So basically it's bulletproof. If you select the right material pump, poly, kynar or stainless steel, you, you've got every, every other wetted component is going to be covered and, and, uh, and you're, you'll be protected, the customer will be protected. So we make these for drum, drum length, 275 gallon tote, 330 gallon tote. We make them with uh, electric motors as well as explosion proof options in electric or air. So please, please keep these in mind and you can find the kit information also on the app. Another question? Yep, some more, come in. Okay, thank you. Okay, can we put um, a flux pump, use a flux pump with a competitor's motor? Good question. So let's take a look at that for a second. Let's say we have uh, this particular competitor and um, what I'd like to say is that when, when a customer buys a, a drum and container pump, he buys a pump, he buys a motor. They don't fail the same day. So uh, what happens is uh, it's an opportunity for us because I like to say the easy sale we can make is to find the customer that has another brand of drum and container pumps because we know they're having problems. So if um, the motor goes down for this co competitor, we can provide a free adapter and a flux motor will fit on a competitor's pump. And if it's the other way around, we can, we can switch it so that uh, uh, their motor fits onto our pump. So, those uh, adapters are available no charge uh, as long as you're buying a pump or a motor. So, so keep that in mind. It's easy to transition a customer over from another brand to Flux because in this uh, arena, um, generally the customer's not stocking parts, unlike he might with a diaphragm pump. Hey, I got $5,000 worth of parts. I can't switch brands. It's easy with a drum and container pump. All right, I think we're ready to talk. That was a second question. Oh, second question. Okay, thank you. Do you offer repair kits? Uh, yes, we do, and I believe those are on the app as well. But um, you know, you can you can uh, provide a kit at the time of quoting or after the fact. If a customer needs a wants to rebuild these pumps, he can order a kit, and he's got everything he needs. But do know that uh, every single pump and every single motor. Um, that we offer has parts available, every single part, individual. So also they can be sent back to Kennesaw, Georgia here for free evaluation. So we, we, do, we, we don't charge uh, and uh, generally anything we pair takes about an hour. So it's about an hour of labor and, and then just the cost of the part. So do keep that in mind. So let's now move to the progressive cavity pumps, the high viscosity pumps. So as I mentioned, um, the impellers really max out about um, 1,200 centipoise. Now, a progressive cavity pump can also pump water-like, but generally that's overkill. So we're, we're looking at these applications that are above 1,200 centipoise. So let's uh, talk about how these pumps uh, operate. So here we have what I call the, uh, the rotor, and the rotor is a single helix. And that uh, will turn in a matching double helix that I call the stator. And when you put these two components together, you can see that there's a, a cavity formed here where my finger is. And when the, when the rotor's in this position, the, the fluid enters over here. And as the rotor turns to this position, 
it now enters over here and alternates back and forth. So what went in the first cavity is now in this pocket right there and then as it continues to rotate it conveys up the cont around the contours of the rotor to the discharge barrel and then up and out. So in addition to be being able to handle high viscosities uh, these pumps are designed to handle particles in suspension, uh, shear sensitive fluids, and these are great for higher pressure applications. We make these in, uh, in industrial models uh, for uh, adhesives, inks, epoxies, resins, so on. Uh, if we get into sanitary, we can handle food, like for example honey, tomato paste. If we're into uh, the cosmetic industry, we're looking at uh, um, you know, creams, paste, gels, lotions, soaps, things of that nature. So in, uh, we have a couple different designs. And the first one I'm going to talk about is the GS. Uh, many of you may notice uh, in our models we have a F55 GS or 560 GS. The G stands for gearbox. So when we take a motor that turns 10,000 RPM, we need to slow it down for these uh, viscous applications. So this planetary gear is a 10 to 1 turndown. So if we're running 10,000 here, we're running 950 to 1,000 RPM where the rotor and stator are. Okay, so the, the GS version is rated to about 50,000 centipoise. Above that, we start looking at the S version. So let me put this down here, and we'll switch over to the S. And I happen to be uh, holding here an S version that also shows you that these pumps can be mounted external. Like I showed you the impeller pump a moment ago that can come out of the bottom of a vessel. We can do the same thing here. And you'll notice we have a tri-clamp inlet. So uh, these pumps can sit horizontal or vertical and do a 90 into it. And this little handy base plate uh, makes it portable, but we can also do it on a more traditional base plate as well. So I do want to show also the circular flange. There's no gearbox. There's no gearbox on this pump. So uh, we have a, a motor that also has a mating flange. So let me grab that. Okay, this little four horsepower air motor, air motor, you can see how that would mate to that flange, but we can also do an electric gear motor as well. And this uh, has a RPM controller, so the speed is limited to 950 RPM. Okay, so in addition to uh, that information, I'd like to also show you that uh, the majority of the units we sell have a Teflon stator, and the Teflon stator is a uh, uh, removable part so when it comes time to replace it you're not having to sell the metal you're just selling the, the Teflon piece so it uh, makes it very affordable for the customer but we also have uh, elastomer stators and these are good for, uh, for thin fluids but uh, we also have a food grade this is white NBR we have Viton as well so there's times when, the, when that might be a better solution maybe on abrasives and also keep in mind that <clears throat> there are vessels that have a baggy liner. So there's always the question, well, how do you keep that baggy li liner from getting sucked into the pump? Uh, we have an accessory here that will basically pin the baggy to the bottom of the vessel. And then you can suck in here, no, no issue. Uh, some of you might be familiar with our older, our older version with the stator housing with the three and a half inch plate uh, welded to it. Now, the, um, these pumps are rated to 100,000 centipoids, and uh, we've actually pumped much higher. We've pumped some cosmetic fluids or products at 250,000 centipoids. Uh, recently, we sold one for a million centipoids. It was very shear sensitive, but uh, we, we had a success with it without requiring any assistance. So, um, but there are applications where we where we need uh, much higher. Um, uh, capability for uh, capability for much higher viscosities, and here uh, we're going to hold up the uh, the Visco Flux Mobile, and you can see this uh, this is a, a unit with a uh, with a plate inside the drum here with a wiper blade that will allow the uh, the, the drum to be totally evacuated. While well, while you're evacuating, you're wiping down the side wall of the drum. Now. We've all uh, drank a milkshake, and we know that uh, when the milkshake is full, we have no problem. But at the end, you, you have to start stabbing the straw around and stirring it. 
So that's that, that's what can happen in a in an application where you're successfully pumping the uh, the drum down just with a bare pump, but then about 20% less you start running into problems. So this is the solution. Is this? Uh, I'll hold this up again. But you can see that this unit uh, comes with a with a pump and the plate with the wiper. Now. Uh, you can see that this pump actually rides on top of the plate and rides down with it as it, as it goes down into the drum. The next image I'm going to show you is what happens when you have a baggy liner. And you can see the end result is that this, uh, this unit uh, has emptied this entire drum, no residual product. At the end, there's an airline that will assist in raising this plate back up. Now, we also have, um, well let's say, let's talk about the price point. This, this runs between $25,000 and $30,000, depending on whether we have an industrial version or a sanitary version. Um, that's, uh, you know, in the marketplace, that's a really good price, but, you know, it, it can be too much for certain customers, in which case we have the Viscoflux Light, And that, that's uh, one without all the bells and whistles, and basically it's a plate that sits on top of the drum with a supporting bracket, and you slide the pump through, and it'll pump it down in a similar ma manner, including whether it has a baggy liner or not. Um, there are competitors out there. One uh, is uh, Graco, and we've got uh, the, the potential ability to adapt a flux pump. I'm just showing the stator housing here. But we, we could uh, substitute our stator housing with this stator housing, and then may potentially adapt to a Graco RAM unit. So that's, we're looking for a couple applications here to try that out. I uh, also want to show you uh, the uh, inside of these pumps. Um, there's this uh, flex flexible shaft here, and this has served as well for many decades. But there's an option to this if uh, there are ever breakage issues, and that's a carton <laughs> shaft. And I'm not sure if anybody knows this exists within our product line, but it's a little heavier duty. And uh, if you ever run into an issue with breakage of the shafts, there we have a solution. Now let's talk uh, about meters for a second. Um, for the most part, our meters are designed for pumping corrosives. They're, they're corrosion resistant. We offer polypropylene, PVDF, ETFE, stainless steel. Uh, this is our FMC meter. And this has some unique capabilities. It has a, a memory for nine different liquids. So you could put sulfuric acid and calibrate it for position one. Then you could do phosphoric acid, position two, and so on. We can also handle the viscosities up to 2,500 centipoise. Uh, the range of flow through this meter is 2.6 minimum, up to 26 gallons a minute. And that's for uh, optimum repeatability or accuracy, one, which is 1%. So this is a nutating disc. It's a wobble plate design, and basically there's a pin that rotates and converts pulses from uh, two gallons a minute or liters or kilograms. Okay, um, these can be sold independent of a flux pump using a process line to totalize using manual or actuated valves. But more commonly, these are sold um, with a flux pump and uh, number one application is manual batching. So we all manually batch when we're filling up our gas tank for a lawnmower. But basically you would have these, this meter installed on the discharge of the pump and you would use your nozzle to start and stop the flow. So if we had a one gallon gas can, we would uh, go about nine tenths of a gallon and then we would use the nozzle on off, on off to top it off, stop right at one gallon. And then we have uh, preset batching whereas the operator can program in five gallons and push a start button. We can do that as well, but we have to take this meter and add an amplifier because uh, these meters are all battery operated and incidentally they're all approved to pump flammables or be used in an explosion proof environment until you add in the amplifier and then it becomes electric and you lose that capability. But uh, we do have this ability for uh, preset batching. Now another meter we have is the FM FMO, which instead of a nutating disc, it's, it's like gears. It's a, we call it an oval rotor type, and these are designed for much higher viscosities, as high as a half a million centipoise. And these come in stainless, aluminum. We have a PPS version. 
But we also have a very low flow uh, version in this range if we can get down to about 10 liters per hour. So if you're looking for a low flow uh, meter, uh, keep us in mind. Now, um, these meters are not designed, even in stainless steel, they're not designed for easy cleaning. Um, but we have another solution. And the solution actually saves on the cost of the meter body, which you can see in stainless steel would be, would be quite expensive. So what we, what we offer then is on our uh, progressive cavity pump, we have a reed switch. And inside here, you can see that this penetrates the body of this uh, flange, and it picks up the pulses and conveys them to this meter display. So all we need is the meter display, and we can get 1% repeatability or accuracy with this type of pump without using a meter body, not having to worry about cleaning of that. So again, we call this the re-switch option, and uh, do keep that in mind. We also do uh, uh, filling systems. And with the filling systems, let's talk about that for a second. Now, Taylor, let me hold this up if you don't mind, get a little close up. What we're looking at is a nozzle with no lever. You can see that there's no lever there, and there's a solenoid valve at the tip, and then there's a, a push button here. And the way you, you would work this, let's say you wanted to fill 500 one gallon jugs, you wanted to do it quickly, but you didn't want to invest in a conveyor. Uh, filling system, which would be quite expensive. So with a pump, a motor, a meter programmed to one gallon, you can uh, insert the meter tip into the first vessel, push the button that you see here on the, on the end, and you will get dispensed uh, one gallon. You go to the next uh, uh, vessel and stick it in again, the tip in and hit push the button, and it will dispense one gallon. Each time it will start and stop the motor. So, uh, but this is a very, uh, you know, affordable filling system, so keep that in mind. And we also can do something similar with high viscosity. So if we have a high viscosity pump, that pump is positive displacement. So um, we can't pump against a closed vessel. So with this one, we have a push button and a nozzle that uh, the push button is, is uh, mounted right here. And then we can, uh, keep that button depressed. As long as we're depressing, have it depressed, we're, we're pumping liquid. As soon as we let go, the motor stops. So we have ability now to pump you know, viscosities up to potentially 50,000 center points. So keep, keep that in mind. Okay, um, I'm trying to think what, uh, what we haven't covered here. Got a couple more questions. You want to okay, take those got now? Some, got some questions. All right. All right. What is the minimum or maximum flow for meters? Okay, on the FM, FMC, the nutating disc, it's 2.6 to 26. But we have another range that can go a little higher, up in the, up in about 65 gallons a minute. If we go to the FMO, we're up about, uh, I think about 150 gallons a minute. And then again, on the low side, we have the one that'll do 10 liters per hour. Does the competition have a liquid saver pump? That's the pump with the built-in foot valve. Uh, they, they do, one competitor does. Uh, unlike ours though, we have top pullout on ours. And on theirs, if there's a need to repair or service it, they have to do it through the inlet of the pump, which is not easy to do. Next question, any, uh, any drum and loaders already in the field? Uh, yes, we have a number of those uh, in, in service, um, and we, we are also continuing to do trials, so keep, keep us in mind if you have an, an opportunity. Again, you know, the type of price point we're talking about, sometimes customers are reluctant to pull the trigger until they've actually seen and touched the, uh, the equipment and seen, seen it operate. And uh, we were in a position to send those out along with with one of our uh, tech guys to be on, on site to, uh, to get things started and, uh, and do educate the, uh, the customers on its use and so forth. But we, uh, we've had some good success pumping different products and uh, with both the ViscoFlux Mobile and Light, and we're, we're look, always looking for more applications. Any more questions? Yep, there's some are coming in now, but if you want to go ahead and move on, I'll get those written out for you. Okay, um, 
Let's talk about hose for a minute. Uh, you know, many, many of you distributors have their, your own source of hose, but as a convenience, you know, we're in a position to uh, offer some uh, different types of hose solutions. Uh, PVC braided hose uh, will, will be a, a good choice from time to time. But what we like more uh, are the, uh, the, the, the hose that are totally chemically resistant. And this one here is a universal hose. It comes with uh, suede swivel fittings so that uh, you know, these, these types of hose are generally thicker and it's difficult to tighten them down on a hose barb. So uh, this is uh, something that, uh, that we offer. And this hose also happens to be conductive. So it's very chemical resistant and conductive. And then the hose that we use on the kit is also available in its PTFE line, also conductive and groundable. So keep, keep that uh, in mind. These are you know, a little, little more expensive than uh, some of your more traditional hose. A couple more questions coming in. Uh, the difference in viscosity between the junior flux and the, let's say, the industrial pump. Okay, the industrial pump with the, the Z impeller, uh, we can do up to 1,200 centipoys, where the, uh, the junior slash combi flux limits about, limit about 300 centipoys. And that's primarily due to the horsepower. The motor's just not powerful enough, and uh, there's also a specific gravity limit of about 1.3. So what is the max size container the mixer can handle? Well, if we're talking about the pump and mixer, we, we've had success in uh, your 275 and 330 gallon totes, uh, particularly when it's a thinner fluid. As you get thicker, then uh, there might be some uh, uh, inability to reach out into the corners of these, uh, of these totes. But certainly uh, the drum is the ideal vessel. Now, as we get into other mixing capability, uh, or requirements, you know, we do have a line of mixers that many of you may not be aware of but we, we can get up to about 10,000 centipoise in viscosity in any type of, uh, of uh, vessel. You know, not the huge ones, but you know, some fairly sizable ones. Um, what is the dry running capability of both the centrifugal and the progressive cavity pump? Okay, that's a, a good question. Uh, one thing I, I think I failed to mention was the, that one of the advantages of the sealess pump is these can run dry when I say dry, let's say the customer was pumping product and walked away, took a break, forgot to come back. These can run dry for over uh, 30 minutes without any damage. And that's because they're filled with fluid. And it takes at least 30 minutes for that impeller to heat that fluid up to a point where it might do some damage. On the other hand, the, uh, the 430 pump with the seal, we might not want to run these long, dry longer than about 10 minutes. Whereas the progressive cavity pump, maybe 15 or 20 seconds is the, is the length of time because uh, of the mechanical seal and also the friction between the rotor and the stator. We don't want to burn, burn up the stator uh, without having some fluid in there uh, to protect it. Okay, I um, also want to talk real quick about some fittings. Um, all of the pumps come normally with a hose connection, but there's times when the NPT makes sense if you're going to put a ball valve in there or you just want to run pipe rather than hose. Uh, we can also thread on NP, or excuse me, uh, tri-clamp or on a stainless pump we can cut off these threads and weld on a tri-clamp. Um, but with the NPT we can also put on uh, uh, banjo fittings for quick disconnects. So those are readily available in the marketplace. So you know, fittings are an option as well. Now, um, keep in mind um, that these pumps are a lot easier to sell if you have some tools. And this is our uh, see-through uh, 424 pump. These run $200. Uh, the 430, which is an actual pump, these are $250. And we can provide a, uh, what I call a dummy air motor. In other words, it's a motor that's gutted. And these are $50. So we have a supply of these as well. So uh, just kind of in... In, uh, in summary, um, um, you know, we want to, uh, to promote uh, uh, these pumps for new applications uh, as well as existing applications where we have competition. We're promoting top entry, we're promoting safety, um, and we're, uh, you know, we're looking for the, the customer that's wanting to have the, the best solution from a cost of ownership standpoint. So, 
I know many of you distributors have uh, options to sell other brands, and in, in this world there's good, better, best. Uh, we know that with Flux we're best plus, and we know that some of our com competitions hardly qualify for good. So, you know, when you have an option uh, in, the, in the end, uh, how that pump performs over time does reflect on you. So we, we highly encourage you to sell the Flux, which is, is the best product. Okay, um, at the end, um, we're, we're at the end, and in closing, I just want to say that I'm prepared to stay on for a little bit of time, but uh, do, uh, do download the Flux, for example, excuse me, for any additional questions. Um, uh, do consider getting some of these sales aids. Uh, we'll be sending out an email that, that has a quote, and um, keep in mind downloading the Flux app, the service, we have uh, future webinars planned. Please give us some feedback on this one and your ideas for the future. I want to thank you all today for your time and interest, and we will see you the next time. Thank you.